In this video, I am not talking about the iPad. I am talking about the 15 inch Wimaxit 1562C portable monitor and why I chose this for video production. Okay, this is a, a little bit unusual item for me to review, but as many of you following my channel and me on my channel are into video production, I thought I'd share with you why I chose this monitor to be part of my kit and, and how, I, how I use it. I have been approached by Andy Cini, who are known for video monitors, asking me if I would like to review one of their small on-camera video monitors, but I had a look what else they do and I found this and I actually needed one in my kit for a reason. I must say that this monitor was supplied to me by Andy Cini for this review. However, I wasn't asked or paid to say anything specific about it. So it is my honest and unbiased opinion about it. So this is Wimaxit monitor. Wimaxit is a sub-brand of Andy Cini and this is a simple portable USB-C powered 15 inch monitor. I decided to incorporate this into my kit because until now until now I would use a small TV set for for monitoring on location and even here recording on my on my YouTube channel as I am still doing right now. Yeah, from Atomos Ninja 5 to the screen so I can see what I'm doing. Small 7 inch, 9 inch monitors, little camera flip screens are all great when you are close to them. This this close. But when you need to check the focusing, framing, exposure, white balance by just a glance, and especially from the distance, I personally prefer a larger screen. So for a while now, uh, when I've been filming interviews or pretty much anything static from the tripod, I'd hook up a small Samsung TV, this, this TV, to the output port of my Atomos Ninja 5. And that not only allows me to see camera feed on a bigger screen, but also allows anyone else in the room to see what is being filmed. That includes the subject being filmed. I can easily turn the screen around for them to see what the shot looks like and what they look like before we even start filming. But there are fundamental problems with that method of using a TV screen. Firstly, I always needed a power outlet to connect my TV screen to. Not always available close by and it's just sometimes not practical to run long extension leads when setting up just one quick shot. Also, my Samsung TV is very clever. Well, too clever, in fact. No matter what I set white balance manually on camera, I literally could look green on my Ninja Fire screen, the TV would correct it automatically and make the picture and the skin tone look about right. Yes, great function when you are watching TV, but not so great when you need to be in control of what you are actually recording. So this is where this monitor comes in. I have been using it for a few weeks now and it works for me absolutely great. And it replaces the TV screen completely. Firstly, I can power it from USB power bank like this. I don't need to worry about power sockets or extension leads and it is very power efficient. I can run it for hours from, from one, of, one of these cheap power bricks. Secondly, the picture is not altered in any way when being displayed. I see exactly what is coming from the camera. Yes, it's not brilliant quality screen, but it's good enough for, for judging if it's right or not. The picture is right or not. I had no way of mounting my TV screen to anything. So it would usually sit on a table or a chair nearby, sometimes on the floor. But this, this monitor is very light and, and small. So I have decided to buy one of these cheap laptop stands with, uh, with wheels from Amazon for it. Now, not only I can adjust the height where the monitor is, but also move it easily around when moving the camera and the tripod. And all of it is portable, foldable for location shooting. The screen is not bright enough for outside shooting, but I would only use this setup with a bigger screen TV or, or this indoors anyway. I've been also using it when filming all of my B-roll recently for the lens reviews. I simply set it up on the side and can easier get the framing and focus, especially on manual focusing macro shots than looking at the Atomos screen, which very often is not even mounted to the camera and used only as a recorder, not 
the monitor. The price of this monitor is £159 in UK or $159 in US. So it is very affordable and for me that takes away some worry about anything happening to it on the shoots. Obviously I don't want to smash it on purpose but there is less stress of, of what if. Because of the price and the size of it, it is also a viable option to use one with every camera in multi-camera setup, especially if you're filming by yourself like I do very often and need to see the feed from the other camera from the distance. It can also be used with a wireless video transmitter system for even more portable monitoring. Unlike me, I'm, I'm that old school, I still use meters of HDMI cable instead. Yeah. So let's run through the specs very quickly. It is 15.6 inch 60 Hz display, full 1080p resolution, uh, built in tiny little speakers on the side, although not great sounding, they are there if you need to play anything with sound back. My clients want to often see the footage of them talking back and I do not get the sound out of Ninja 5 without the headphones. It's great if you only got one person, but when you got two, three people in the room who want to all hear the recording, the speakers, even though not great, will do that with this 178 degree angle of view which makes it a little bit easier for all the people to see the screen clearly from the sides three yes three usb-c sockets and one mini hdmi we weighs 3.3 pounds which is about 1.5 kilograms it is certainly light and thin enough to stick it in one of my pelly cases with the rest of the gear to transport it there is a menu system to control the monitor's functions it does the job but it is a little bit clunky and hard to navigate but once you set it up to your needs you don't really need to keep adjusting it every time you use this screen. And it is of course a monitor that can be used as a second screen for your laptop. It can be powered and, and it can be connected to MacBook Pro with just one cable. It can be powered from and connected to MacBook Pro with just one cable. You can uh, mirror your phone onto it for photo video viewing. Uh, I think great particularly for watching Netflix or YouTube from your phone with someone else when, when traveling or for connecting any HDMI device like a game console. Although I don't know why you'd need a portable screen to plug in something that needs power from the mains anyway, but you can if you wanted to. It also comes with this Apple iPad-like case, which can be used, of course, as a stand like so. I needed this as a solution for portable monitoring to go alongside my Atomos Ninja 5, not to replace it. And it does the job very well for me. The picture is not great, not spectacular or mind-blowing, but if you don't have unrealistic expectations about the performance you're gonna get from this, then this is a great value for the money and certainly good enough for a job. And this is it from me. If you like this video, then you know what to do. Consider subscribing and hit that bell button below to get notifications of my future videos, which will be most definitely about lenses, cameras, and other photo video related gear. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Portable foldable. <laughs> <coughs> Not COVID. My precious. This is a take four, I think. The first time around, the microphone disconnected. There was no sound halfway through. Second time, the phone rang. The third time, the doorbell rang. So let's see. Fourth take is gonna be the one.